Poker Go pre-show. It is great to be with you. We are once again in the Ivy Room here at the Aria. Stay fair alongside Remco Renkma and Remco. Today we are getting into the big one, the 100K Championship event. There have been numerous days leading up to this where people have been buying in for $50,000. That's obviously a whole lot of money. What's made it interesting is that they've been able to fire multiple bullets at that. Uh, not, not the case anymore. As we get into the 100000 this is a freeze out. This is your opportunity. Either you make an impact here or you're walking. Yeah, we're going to get into some of the action that has already happened out of outside of the sight of the cameras because, of course, the Poker Go stream is kicking off shortly. We'll get you guys ready for all that stuff. But it also means that some of the action has already been playing out right behind us in the regular poker room. And we've already lost some very, very big names. And like you said, no re-entries today. So those guys are done. Yeah, and I mean, just, just to break it down for you, if, if you're tuning in for the very first time, um, PokerGo has all of this on demand for you. So if you've missed any of these days leading up to it, there's been a lot of really intense play from the biggest players in the world. But like I said, $50,000 has been the price for people to be able to buy into these events as we've been going along. You can watch it all go down on Poker Master, or excuse me, on PokerGo. But Poker Masters, just to give you a bit of an overview, five event tournament series with $50,000 uh, for the first four and then the one 100K buy-in championship event, which is what's going on today. Now, the previous days where we've been doing this pre-show, uh, people have been able to watch the final Final table. That's not the case today. We're going to have a feature table because this 100K buy-in championship event actually goes over a couple of days, right? Yeah, so the structure is much, much different for this 100K compared to those 50Ks. Uh, we've had four 50Ks wrap up already to this point, and those were all re-entries, and those were also kind of like turbo tournaments. They all finished uh, within about, I should say, uh, 16 to 17 hours of play. Uh, this event is going to take about 30 hours of play, uh, stretched out over three full days of play to get down to a winner. So obviously, that's going to create much different dynamics. It's really going to change the flow of the tournament. We're still going to see some early eliminations, but we're going to make uh, day two with a lot more players than in the past couple of days. When we got down to a final table of seven every single time that we uh, that we played on day one. So definitely a very big difference, uh, but it's going to be uh, uh, sort of a slow burn, which makes it much more exciting because we're also going to have uh, a lot of play from the early stages of the event, which allows for a lot more strategy, which allows for a lot more uh, you know chit chat on the side because the pressure isn't that high. So I think we're in for a treat these first two days. Now, as we mentioned, um, the the, the players that have the most money over the course of all of these tournaments, they're the ones that are going to be crowned the very first poker master. They're going to get that purple jacket. And, it, you know, it's not a point system. It's just very clearly how much money that you've made throughout all of this. There have been some interesting side bets that have been made. Uh, Daniel Negreanu, of course, made a number of bets that he would be the one that wins the purple jacket. But he's going to need a huge performance here in the championship to even be able to sniff that, right? Yeah, Negreanu basically needs a win in the 100K to even have a chance to win the purple jacket. And and with that, of course, all his prop bets. And reason for this being that there are a lot of players who have cashed for at least you know one hundred or two hundred thousand dollars, which means that if he wants to overtake them on the leaderboard and if they make it to the same final table, he's going to need to outlast them by quite a big margin. Uh, however, we've lost two big names already. I, I don't know if I can tell this right yeah, now. Yeah, don't, 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 don't spoil it. I'm either. like, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get into this in a bit. For people who are uh, following us on social media, they might have caught a little bit of a uh, taste of the action from the uh, from the room. Uh, but yeah, Negrano needs a very very big performance here in this tournament. Uh, we all know that he is, of course, you know, much better in these freezeouts than in those re-entry events. Um, I think that he has a very good understanding of maneuvering himself through these days. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's a tough field. There's a lot of money at stake, and it's still anyone's game for the jacket. Well, we'll, we'll run down what happened over these these final tables here in just a moment. Also, give you an idea of how the standings look overall and who the leaders are, who's currently leading the race to get that very first purple jacket and that title of Poker Master. From the Aria room in, uh, in at the, from the Aria room, from the Ivy room at the Aria in Las Vegas, the Poker Go pre-show will be right back. the jacket actually being the trophy, it's important that it not just be something that looks like fast fashion or looks like something that is like, you know, in vogue now, but like if I'm a winner in 2029, I should still say, wow, I may actually take that out of the case one day and actually wear that. It's that important to like create something that's that timeless. It has to be something that when you put it on, it's like, wow, this is really elegant. Like when people think of the best things that winners in sporting events receive, it'd be great for them to mention this jacket. 
that to me is like there's no better story than that. Welcome back. It is the Poker Go Free Show. It's great to be with you today. We're in the Ivy Room here at the Aria. And yes, Poker Masters, we are getting closer and closer. In fact, today the 100K Championship event is officially underway. You're going to see a feature table on Poker Go here shortly. If you have any catching up to do, of course, it's all on demand for you. And then, of course, the live play is coming up at the bottom of the hour. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet to Poker Go, it's very simple to do. Just go to PokerGo.com or right below us in the player. There's a link. You can just click on that. And then once you do that, you enter that code MASTER17, as you see right below us. You're going to get a discount on that annual pass. And we talk about all the great things that Poker Go has on it on a regular basis. But just a reminder, if you're tuning in for the very first time, by the way, thank you for that. Uh, they have Poker After Dark that is back. The World Poker Tour has just done an exclusive deal with Poker Go for their final tables to be streamed and original programming like you're going to see with Poker Masters. All of that is available and much more over 100 days of live poker every single year on Poker Go. So make sure that you get access right now and use that promo code MASTER17 for that discount on the annual pass. Now, Remco, looking at how things have developed so far, we'll look here at event number one and the final table results that we saw there because we've had numerous events that have been going on. And again, $50,000 was the price tag to buy into each one of these. But this is what happened in event number one with the final table and how it all shook out. Coming into the final table, we had obviously some chip leaders that, that looked like it was very prominent promising for them Matt Hyman leading the way with 1.4 million in chips whereas on, on on in the shorter stacks we had people that had almost you know, about, about a third of the chips coming in there so some 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 high hopes for guys like Sontheimer and Hyman going into it, but that's obviously not exactly how things played out. Yeah, as we get you guys ready for the 100K that is starting today, uh, this was how the first event started, which, feel, which feels like a month ago because we had so much action on Poker Go uh, that it's hard to believe you know, that you know, that was only just a few days ago. Uh, like you said, this final table that we just saw the chip counts of uh, is available on Poker Go now to rewatch and, you know, Cover your ears if you don't want to know, but this is, or cover your eyes actually, because it's on the screen right now. Uh, this is Get how out of the room. this is how the final table played out. Nick Schulman taking down the first event for nine hundred and eighteen thousand dollars. Matt Hyman in second for five sixty one, and then a um, a sort of murderous row of German players: uh, Stefan Schilhabel, uh, Stefan Sondheimer, uh, Dominic Nietzsche, Corey Aldemir, and then Adrian Mateos and Daniel Negreanu, who bubbled the actual final table, finishing in eighth place. Uh, but that was, however, his first and only cash of the Poker Master so far uh, so he has a lot of catching up to do with regards to the purple jacket now in event number two going into the final table this is how the standing looks uh, from the chip perspective uh, Fedor Holtz ended up mixing it up there um, uh, lo looking for his first win at that final table however was unable to get it in event number two even though he came in second in chips yeah there was a massive clash between uh, Christian Kristner and Fedor Holtz uh, that sort of determined the outcome so it seemed of this event however uh, Stefan Sondheimer mounted a massive comeback during heads-up play, which ultimately put him into the winner's circle here during the Poker Masters, taking home $900,000, Fedor getting second for 561. And then, of course, we had the epic marchese Phil Helmuth battle that resulted in Helmuth finishing in fourth, Marchese in third, and then uh, further down the line, Christian Kristner, Adrian Mateos, Bryn Kenny, and the uh, final table bubble boy, uh, Dan Shack in eighth place. Now, as we move on to final table number three from event number three, we actually have some clips to show you. And first up is going to be Doug Polk. He's getting his his uh, his chips in with pocket fours versus Bryn Kenny's queen eight. Does it hold up or not? Let's take a look. First card. It's not a very good one. Oh, there's two of them. I call. Doug. Oh, look at that. Wakes gotta up finish with me the two fours against the, the queen eight. Now. <laughs> Just gotta win a race. Uh, That's the exact hand I had on your show. All right, good luck, man. This is what you want to be your worst case scenario when you're yeah. all in for your tournament life is a race. Both these guys. He wanted to see two overs and he wanted to see an under pair. Yep. Sometimes you gotta do that though. Do what? And the flop, queen, Ooh. seven, seven. Polk's fours smashed. Looks like Joe Ingram's going to get to keep That's his hair as the four comes. Deuce on the turn, and you're going to have to elaborate on that story as we await Doug Polk's fate. Ooh, a five, close. But that's not it. And Polk 
just moments after Kerry Katz was eliminated in sixth, himself oh. eliminated in fifth and earning $144,000. A disappointing moment for Doug Polk there as he gets eliminated. However, a very happy moment for Joey Ingram, who gets to keep his his beautiful head of hair. Uh, that if he if Doug Polk had won, they had a side bet going. Then he actually got to do the the deed himself. He was going to bust out the clippers and shave the head of Joey Ingram. However, of course, that did not happen, despite the fact that Doug came in really stacked at that final table. Yeah, definitely. You could sort of see the disappointment. Like in his eyes when that queen hit the flop, giving Kenny a winning pair of queens, at least, you know, up until that point, which ended up being the best hand. Um, but when you come into a final table like this, where the structure is very fast and you need to win flips like that in order to get in contention or to stay in contention, uh, that, of course, is disappointment. But they, they all know how this works. And, you know, hours later, Doug was already playing a big stack again in the next event, which, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but obviously, you know, that final table did not go as planned. Yeah, Dan Smith, who actually came into that final table as the chip leader, got his cards in with pocket sevens. Here's how that unfolded. I think it's going to get in this time, though. They're reasonably deep, David. 295. It's a three bet to 295. Yeah, but it's four handed. A pair is big hand. And these guys play with each other a lot. They have reputations. They know that they make moves against each other. They know that they know that they know that, et cetera, et cetera. All in. All in. Call. Call. Smith deciding to move all in. Four betting and a snap call is not exactly what you want to hear when you have those two sevens. You a little bit surprised he didn't just flat with his stack? No, I mean, if you flat, you're going to see over cards a lot. You're going to be out of position and not really know. I guess no, Kenny's a small one. The button looked like it was in front of him, sorry. But it's still going to be difficult to play flatting. And they're inflating the pot with not that deep behind. Sevens are pretty lucky. So this is not the spot Smith wanted to find himself in as the flop comes ace nine deuce with a couple of clubs giving him a glimmer of hope in the form of a running flush draw. Board pairs on the turn and now it's just one of two remaining red sevens in the deck as Smith getting that little prepay in there. Can he hit a set and stay alive? No dice. Dan Smith is your fourth place finisher. So there you have it. Another elimination there. Dan Smith goes down, gets his sevens in versus Jacks, And next thing you know, he is also eliminated from the tournament. But, of course, you can watch all of this if you want to watch the entire event on Poker Go. And thank you to everyone that's joining us on social right now to watch this pre-show. We appreciate yeah, you guys being with us. Absolutely. I mean, Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, we're all over the place. All over. And we're showing all these amazing hands and all these amazing highlights. This is all the stuff that you guys, you know, might have already seen. But in case you haven't yet, this is all happening live on Poker Go and also on demand in case you've missed any of these final tables. So I saw some chatter in some of the chat boxes wondering whether or not this was the final table. No, this is the action from event number three, the 50K that played out a few days ago. And then also on this very show, we're going to have highlights from event number four, which came down to a winner yesterday. And then today is when the 100K starts. That'll have three days of live action. So we're not seeing Go. a final table this evening. Of course, we're going to see a feature table with some really big names that are going to be on that feature table. We'll actually get to that in just a little bit. But first, we actually have some more highlights from event number three because, of course, a lot of crazy stuff went down. In this case, it was Jake Schindler finds himself all in against Eric Seidel. He's like, it's nothing. He's got some spidey senses. And Seidel says all in. Very easy call for Schindler. <coughs> it is a race. We know one ace is gone and a seven. But the odds don't know that. And a seven, you said? Yeah. Excuse me, seven of spade. Aha. Uh -huh. 
I was wondering where the relevance <laughs> was. Go home, David. You're drunk. <laughs> I am not actually. I'm just drinking some green tea. Got Let's not get defensive. 12 Nobody hours of sleep. You of being intoxicated. Just explaining why I'm struggling with English language. Ink, English language. See, yeah, look, exhibit A. <laughs> We're going to have to get a CAT scan. <laughs> <laughs> Two threes in the lead and still good on the flop. Jack for fishing is Jake Schindler, who is covered by Seidel. A three would just, it's over. Here comes the turn. It's a six, no help. That's where they're always asking for that ten or queen to at least give them some added sweat. You're sitting on ace. King I just asked for the ace or the king. <laughs> I just asked straight up. You don't like the uphill climb. Here yeah, comes the river. Can Schindler hit? Oh, a three. Overkill. That's it for Jake Schindler. I don't think he can be too disappointed. I mean, he did exactly what any of us would have done on the button with an ace king of spades. Yeah. And then we move on to heads up. And when you're heads up and you're short stacked, you're always just looking for that right spot to get your chips in. Unfortunately for Eric Seidel, that hand didn't really come along for him, and he was forced to take all of his chips with deuce three offsuit and get him into the middle. Question is, would it hold up? Would this be a big moment where Eric Seidel was able to reboot and get himself back into the game? Let's have a look. I'm not even going to look. The thing is, with that <laughs> ante being in there, Eric has to kind of put in with anything because it's like an overlay. <laughs> Correct. Of like 100,000. Especially versus the no look. <laughs> I got to play. Oh, Here we go. Work. What do we have? Looks like some paint for Bryn. Spin the wheel. Ooh, King Jack. Yeah. It's good you stuff. This one too. Make it and then another two Ooh. <laughs> the nut blow. No. Oh, no. no. The nut low. It can't, it can't happen again. Oh, that king just popped out of there to lock it up. <laughs> it's going to be pretty hard. He's going to need runners. I'm going to swallow my phone. Upside down. That's it, boys. Yeah, that's that's it. it. We have a champion. Oh. Bryn Brenny. Your 2017 prelim number three. 50K buy-in poker masters champ. And Seidel, your runner up. Tell you what, man, Bryn Kenny has been playing some lights out poker. Good for him getting himself a win there in event number three. Yeah, so I have a lot to say about this heads up. I made sure that you sort of throw to me so I can go on this little rant here about this heads up play. Um, I was there when this was getting played out standing on the set. And it was hysterical to see Eric Seidel and Bryn Kenny go at it. And you're watching this and might wonder, like, what's so special about it? Well, Bryn Kenny had Eric Seidel all in ten times. And every single time, Eric Seidel won the hand. So that was absolutely incredible. And at the end of it, and you, you could sort of see it in the clip, how they were laughing a little bit. In the end of it, it sort of became almost like a joke. Like every single time they got it all in, Bryn Kenny had the better hand, and he ended up losing. So that was really, really ridiculous. And then at the end, Seidel had Kenny all in twice for Seidel to win the tournament. And then Kenny managed to survive. 13 all-ins later in this heads-up battle, in the end, it was Kenny who took the event down, and they were sort of, you know, laughing their way through at how absurd it was. And when I spoke to Kenny after he took the event down, the first thing he said was, I don't think there's ever been a player in the history of poker who has won a tournament being all-in 10 times and losing, because that's quite a feat. Yeah, back and forth, Eric Seidel, Bryn Kenny, both of them great, obviously, in that environment. Eric Seidel, though, has had a whole lot of experience in that environment so the fact that he was not able to come away with it i mean there's nothing you can do at that point though when there's that many all-ins uh you know just the, the, the cards are falling like they may taking a look here at how things actually shook out Bryn kenny with a, a big fat win at almost a million dollars 960k for him yeah this makes him one of the favorites for the purple jacket because you know a lot of players that are playing in the 100k today are going to need a win or a second place Bryn Kenny might have enough uh, winning just maybe like three, four, maybe $500,000 in this event. Uh, you know, having almost a million uh, in earnings from this event alone uh, really puts him in a good position. 
The 100K Championship event is underway right now. The feature table is coming up at the bottom of the hour. So less than 25 minutes away. Your opportunity to watch it all go down live. Again, $100,000 was the buy-in for this championship event. You can watch it exclusively in one place, and that is Poker Go. If you haven't subscribed yet, get a discount on that annual pass by using the code that you see right below us, Masters17. And then also, the link is right below us as well. So just a little further down there, just click that link. It'll take you directly to Poker Go. And then you can watch on your computer, you can watch on your phone, you can watch on your TV if you plug in your Apple TV or your Fire Stick or any of that. It's with you wherever you want, and it's a great way to watch the best poker available. Again, it's cheap, and it's got original programming and also really high stakes action was always a whole lot of fun to watch you get a discount on the annual pass like i said using that promo code master 17 hey, let me interrupt you there for yeah. a second because you know if you're watching this at home and you love to love poker and you're watching this this pre-show you know ten dollars is like you know the average opening raise when you're playing your little one three game or it's when like you're the price of a coffee at starbucks like you could just it's like a frappuccino yeah Nobody, isn't, isn't nobody poker better than a single frappuccino. Nobody that watches this should ever order a frappuccino ever again because that means that you're missing out on one month of poker. Go <laughs> just action. do one less frappuccino a month and you can watch all the poker that you want. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so we so we have one more uh, final table to run down when it comes to these 50k events, and that that one was also very exciting. Some of those highlights are coming up next. This is the Poker Go pre-show. We'll be right back. This is just evil. Just don't see how I can fold this hand. I got a massive hand, by the way. Massive. I mean, if you got me beat, it's so cold-blooded. My hand's way too big to fold. Kaboom. Okay. Welcome back. It's the Poker Go Free Show. We are in the Ivy Room at the Aria in Las Vegas. This table that we're sitting at right here, this is this is the table where all of the big money moves around. This is a private room here at the Aria. It's very exclusive. For some reason, they let us come in here and set up every, shop, which I love. Every time we walk in here, I check under the table if anyone maybe forgot a $5,000 chip. <laughs> Has it happened yet? So far, no luck. Yeah. We're going to keep trying, though. Yeah, yeah. Every single day, we'll make that check. Uh, also, just so you know, just so you're aware of the environment that we're in, if they decide that they want to start having a big game, in here at any point they just may kick us out mid-show because frankly i mean our our pre-show i think is great but i mean it's not as great as you know some, some, some <laughs> of the highest stakes poker players in the entire world congregating in this room so you know at any point things could just totally go off the rails the only chance dan bilzerian will ever be on this live show is if he just walks in here right now and kicks us out and tells us to leave trying to play for him play for a million dollars yeah, yeah. All right, so we, we have a lot of events that we've already covered. Um, obviously, now we're down to event number four of the 50K buy-in. And this, of course, is also going to help to determine who is leading the way when it comes to that chase for that elusive purple jacket and the title of the very first Poker Master. But before we get into that, uh, Remco, talk a little bit about how people, when they, when they subscribe to Poker Go, they can watch it no matter where they are. And that's actually one of my favorite things to do now. It's not like the old days where you have to sit down in front of your TV and, and click it on and then wait through commercials to watch all the action. You can watch all of this programming commercial free. You just bring your laptop with you. Maybe you want to use it as a double screen. You just bring up another browser in your window on your computer while you're at work, and you can watch all of this great programming on demand. And it's not just the new programming. It's not just Poker Masters. There's this huge back catalog of programming that's also available for free once you subscribe. Yeah, it's funny how many. It's funny to realize how many gems there are in the history of televised poker. And the way for me to realize that was when PokerGo launched. I just put my iPad next to my computer. 
I hooked up Poker Go. I hit play on the first episode that I saw, and I just kept running it. I kept running it every single day. We have so much content. We are now deep into September, and I am still watching episodes that I've not seen before. So the thing is, is that we not only have all the live action today, Poker Masters, tomorrow and the day after. We also have the World Poker Tour uh, coming up on Friday. We have, you know, the entire archive of Poker After Dark episodes all the way through season four, and the later seasons of Poker After Dark of the original show are also going to be uploaded onto Poker Go as it's well. It's such a throwback. Have you watched some of those older oh episodes? God. Yeah, it's like you go back just a handful of years and it seems like a lifetime ago that those players were around the table and it, it's funny like revisiting some of those personalities that you may have forgotten about because they're not as active as they used to be. It's really a lot of fun to go back and dig into that archive a bit. Oh, absolutely. And then also the pokerographies tell the stories of all these players. So if you are watching or looking at the list of pokerographies, you can see these names also in all of our other content. So, you know, while you might have seen the pokerography with with someone like Phil Helmuth or, or, or you know, someone like Jennifer. Go watch the Nick Jen Shulman one. That one is fantastic. Yeah, and then you can watch them play again in all the other episodes. Like, even on the new Poker After Dark shows, we've already featured a lot of people that were part of the pokerography series. But then also, of course, the original content. We have Poker Nights, really funny, with Chris Parnell. Mm -hmm. We have a Major Wager with Joey Ingram. I love that, man. They're running all around Vegas doing all these crazy things. They, they, they put them down on Fremont Street, and Tony Esfandiari doing magic tricks, and Daniel Negreanu doing, like, Cirque du Soleil acrobatics. It's, it's, it's fascinating. It's great. Yeah, and, and, and that is the sort of stuff you can expect from Poker Go. Yeah. And then, of course, the one final thing I wanted to mention is that this year we also broadcast the World Series of Poker. So if you want to rewatch some of yep. the events that were played at the World Series of Poker, including uh, the 10 horse which is my favorite uh, you can also rewatch all that stuff right now on poker go yeah and the world poker tour they just did a deal with poker go exclusively so their final tables going to be streamed on poker go uh, their first final table they had streamed featured the one and only phil helmuth and when it comes to jawing phil helmuth is one of the best i don't want to spoil the uh, the end i will say this much though he uh, he ended up heads up for that title did he get it or not of course you can google it or you can go watch it all unfold it's great there's another one coming up later this week from borgata all right, on to event number four in the final table there. Again, a lot of action between these players. $50,000 was the buy-in for this one. Uh, Zach Clark ended up bubbling. Let's take a look how that went. Suit, and Doug Polk is asking for a count. Yeah, he's got an ace, and he knows Zach's severely short-stacked, going to be forced to shove all in on the button with a huge range of hands. Yeah, could this be the bubble moment? Ace Trey, though, could easily be dominated and isn't necessarily in fantastic shape. No, not against If it anything. wraps around, which in all likelihood it does, as it is in this case, Clark's yeah, holding. Doug's also trying to figure out what to do about Peters on his left. Oh, Lewis raises. Wait for 130. Doug will give Peters a little fiscal nudge. David calls and. Zach sees that he's behind, does not appear thrilled. Why would he? Peters had 10-8 suited, by the way. All right, good luck, man. Good luck. <laughs> Basically, whoever wins gets the D. Peters money. That's what, that's what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy money to get. Zach didn't really find that funny. Kind of just grinned and looked over like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, based on the tension in those lips, he's not a fan of the ace-king deuce flop, and why would he be? He's still behind. Seven, close, but not what Zach needs. It's down to a king or a six. Does he have that cyborg, Seidel run good, double up in him? Nope, it's a seven, and that's it. Zach Clark leaving in seventh place with zero dollars, no cash. I think the only thing worse than bubbling is bubbling on a huge platform like Poker Go so everyone gets to see your pain. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. And, you know, he had to come back the next day for that final table knowing that 
He was the short stack, knowing that he ha didn't have a great chance to make it into the money. So then, of course, you know he knows that this is a possibility, but it still really sucks. Uh, one little thing to add here about Zach Clark. Uh, people might not be aware. He's actually the nephew of the late Chip Reese, who uh, passed away nearly 10 years ago in December of 2007. He, of course, a legend of the game and a member of the Poker Hall of Fame, the youngest ever uh, Hall of Fame inductee at age 40, which then you know became the Chip Reese rule. Uh, no one would ever get inducted again uh, before the age of 40. Uh, and that, of course, you know got Phil Ivey and, and, and Daniel Negrano in at a much later time. Uh, but yeah, Zach Clark is, is tied to poker, how, however way you spin it. And he plays super high stakes. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure that you know Chip Reese would be proud of him. And as you saw on that hand, Doug Polk took the chip lead there and was leading the way. But Doug Polk has had some really good fortune and some really bad fortune throughout this tournament. Let's take a look at Doug Polk in action, and we'll see this, uh, which way this one falls. Calling out of the big blind. Ooh, look at this. Smash look job. at this. Set of jacks for Doug and a flush for Stefan. Wow. This is incredible. This is expensive. I'm pretty sure Doug, unless the board pairs, Doug will be doubling up Stefan. I guess another spade could come, could slow the action down. Bet call of 38,000 so far. Safe looking card on the turn for both players as Goose checks again. Both players are just thinking that they got the other guy trapped. Little does Doug know he needs the board repair. Almost 200 in the middle. And Polk is firing. 138. Looks like Goose is just going to call. Yeah. Keep giving him rope. I think he's setting it up so he can probably check raise all in on the river if it doesn't come another spade. Or play the board. And the river. Oh! Quad jacks for Doug Polk. And Sontimer is cooked here. Uh, yeah. Pretty lucky he played it this way. I mean, unless he still somehow gets it in. But if he doesn't, you know, had he check raised all in on the turn or, or whatnot, he'd be going home. So he somehow put him in a spot where there's a chance he doesn't go broke. We're going to get a bet out of Doug here for sure. He doesn't want that penalty for not betting the nuts. How much is he going to go for? Is he going to go for a big bet? I think if he knew, you know, his opponent could have a flush, he probably might just overbet all in. But I think he's thinking his opponent's holdings can't be that great, considering he's got four of the jacks. So I imagine he's going to make a kind of bet he thinks can get called here, like two hundred to 300000 Quad seems like Oops. As I mentioned, things went really well and really not so well for Doug Polk and a lot of those hands. That one went from not good to really good all of a sudden when that river fell. But something that you mentioned that I thought was a great observation is that Sondheimer managed to lose pretty much the minimum amount there when Doug Polk rivered that quad jack. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, I would have been like in at valet like by the time that river hit <laughs> like that's just insane the yeah. fact that you flop a flush in this situation with you know, fairly shallow stacks playing shorthanded flopping a flush against you know Doug Polk who is not known to be the tightest player in the world um, obviously Sondheimer is on a completely different level than we are and I would love to ask him about his exact reasoning uh, throughout this hand but obviously when the board pairs on the river there's mu not much 
he can get value from. Even myself, as you know, an amateur player, can see that part of the hand. But of course, before that, uh, you know, not a single extra chip went in, and Sondheimer lost the minimum. Uh, but it's it's still crazy to think that you know you, you get a little bit of a of a flush quad setup going on uh, at that feature table, and it's uh, it's part of the reason why you can't miss any action because you never know when the next big suck out is going to come. Undoubtedly, Stefan Sontheimer uh, has, has played some of the best poker that we've seen here at Poker Masters. Would you say that in, in your own rankings that he's been number one so far? Absolutely. If if Poker Masters had you know a point system as opposed to the cash leaderboard, it would be nearly impossible to catch up with Sondheimer. He has a first, a fourth, and a fifth, and also a final table bubble, which of course you know got him no money. Uh, but he got close to cashing all four times. Uh, he did cash three times uh, for well over a million dollars. So that really puts him in in top contention for that purple jacket. But like I said. This is a cash leaderboard, so depending on how big the 100K is going to get at the end of tonight when registration closes, that's going to determine how many players will have a chance to overtake him, as he is still the current leader. Well, this was a, uh, a very interesting hand between Sontheimer and Brandon Adams. Uh, this is where Sontheimer ended up getting all of his chips in. He found himself with ace-5 going up against pocket fives for Brandon Adams. Let's have a look how it played out. And he's at the two short stacks. It's 500 to 390. Call. call. And Brandon finds a call. Oh, oh the call. Oh, 350. Okay. We'll get it in. I thought he went on in. Okay. No. no. Okay. That's a little close off, though. How much? Oh, this is interesting, David. It would appear that. Yeah, he had a small little nugget more and thought he went all in and just called, but okay. there's no amount, no flop that'll come or they're not going to get that last 110,000 in. Uh, hit. Ooh. 10 9 deuce. And I believe Brandon put Goose all in? So he, Goose made it. A number, uh, Goose made it 325, leaving 65 behind. Brandon thought he was all in and said, call, thinking he said all in. So there was 65K left. They, they agreed pre-flop <laughs> getting the 65,000 in when there's 800,000 in the middle. But I, I don't know that they got it in until the flop rolled off. That's what I'm saying. So, but they made a commitment to put the money in he, anyway. Sondheimer had two big blinds like left ten. by but accident. Who bet? Was it Brandon Ooh, that bet the flop? So many options. Th they, Three, four. There is no one bet. Oyster. He goes, oh, I thought you were all in. Well, we're getting it in anyway. Sure. Uh, and they put their chips uh, in front of them. Uh, so effectively, uh, they went all in in the dark with the rest of their money because they said, we're not folding, and they agreed. Would it, would it hurt? But they would made that easy? commitment to not folding and getting the rest so of the money like in prior to the flop. <laughs> yes. Okay. As soon as they realized that Brandon made a mistake. When Brandon goes, oh, you're not all in. He goes, oh, I have 65 behind. He's like, well, I'm putting it in me too. Okay. And they put their chips in front. So just run the board out. So the board paired on the turn, and now Sontheimer needs an also ace or a nine to counterfeit the fives, and instead, <laughs> it's a deuce. Okay, that hurts. That hurts. No, Fuck I, it. I see the pain now. I can see. I can see and why Goose is going to finish in fifth place here, David. Good play, Much to the relief, I'm sure, like, next of the rest of the field. To Danny McGrady. A nice pickup and scoop of chips there for Brandon Adams, who's actually a former professor at Harvard, and he looks exactly like a former professor at Harvard. He's here all day, guys. Yeah, yeah. And, and as you mentioned, a fantastic observation. The best chin in all of poker. Oh, I no mean, doubt just, about it's it. It's exquisite. He has aged one year in the last ten. Yeah. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Did you see how he drank that coffee? Exactly as uh, if they cast a guy in a movie to play a professor at Harvard, they would just take his playbook. I mean, it's everything he does is exactly as you'd expect. I thought we went to a slow mo clip. No, no, that's just. But it was actually like the. He's like, the I, would, I don't want to rush this. I'm thinking about things that you can't comprehend because you're not smart enough. All right. <laughs> so the final hand here in heads up play of event number four. Let's take a look at the, how the things unfolded in this dramatic moment. It is. Been a rough outing so far, and heads up play for Polk, who now finds himself out chipped more than two to one. Stay in the course, men raising the button. Adams loves the look of nine seven of diamonds, especially when he's got diamonds covered and flops an open ended wow. straight flush draw against the flush draw. Gut shot straight flush draw for except Doug for the Polk. seven is in yeah. Brandon's hands. 
So he literally, every diamond kills him. He needs an offsuit seven or a pair. I guess all sevens are offsuit. He needs a seven, five, or a four. 100K bet. Nine high is the best hand right now, but can't imagine that it's going to get to showdown if there's any betting or it doesn't improve, obviously. Brandon check raising here to 320,000. And could this be the moment where Doug Polk decides? Come on. Yeah. You do too much of this. I call. Snap oh, call by Adams. Doug is going to hate this. Oh, God damn it. Really? Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm destroyed. <laughs> oh, my God. Brutality. Five would be no good for Polk because, of course, that would give Adams All right, well, the straight. I need a four. Race seven? Wow, this is this is really bad. Jesus. Oh. <clears throat> Could this be it? It's a diamond <laughs> on the turn. Picks but up some life. He picks up, he one, picks one, up out. one out. Yeah, but he trades right, game, man. six outs oh, for that one out. He brutal. ends up making like, the five. Oh, Jesus, yeah. Good but, of course, that gives Adams. What are you going to do? Such is life. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. He had the diamonds. but uh, Brandon just, Android Adams. Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> Incredible. And he sits back down. He is your champion. Yeah. Four to the straight flush for both of those guys on the flop. Like I said, a dramatic moment for sure to round out event number four on that final table. Yeah, no, it, it was sort of the perfect culmination of two hands that connected super well with this board. When I spoke to Brandon after the fact, he you know wasn't really that excited when it when it came down to it because he knew he had a lot of outs, but he wasn't expecting Polk to be basically drawing dead with a lower flush draw and also a lower straight draw. So at the same time, he had him crushed on both ends, and you know that worked out the way it did. And you could tell from the way Doug Polk spoke about it that he was not very happy with that showdown. And it reflects itself again here in these payouts that you're seeing on the screen right now. Uh, Brandon Adams taking home $819,000, which is the biggest live tournament cash of his poker career. He's been around for a very, very long time, but this year is by far and away his best, having won a big event in Florida and then also additionally making a big final table down in Australia. Australia at the start of this year. So Brandon Adams is riding at high of confidence. Doug Polk finished in second place for 468. Still a very respectable cash. Also means that he's in the green for the series. Uh, but yeah, Brandon Adams, definitely a great showing. Well, you mentioned being in the green for the series. That was event number four. That's a single event, very important event, but it's just one of four. So let's take all of those events, shake them up, put them together. This is how things look as people are racing towards that purple jacket. Who is going to be our very first poker master? Stefan Sondheimer is leading the way. Yeah, Stefan Sondheimer is leading the way here uh, in, on, the, on the Purple Jacket standings. It is very, very close. Bryn Kenny is only about a min cash away from overtaking him here in the standings. But let's break the news right now to the people that are watching and getting ready for the Boca Go stream that is about to kick off. Stefan Sondheimer already knocked out Doug Polk. So that is like the, the, the sort of perfect scenario for Sondheimer. Not only did he eliminate one of the players who is closest to catching him, but also he took all those chips for himself, uh, solidi solidifying his position as the front runner for the jacket. Additionally, we've also lost Nick Schulman, who was eliminated by Scott Seifer in the first level of play. So looking at the leaderboard right now, Sondheimer, Kenny, and Adams are all still in the running, but Sondheimer has a huge advantage going into day one of the 100K. Now, we are moments away from the stream starting over on Poker Go, and there is going to be a feature table where you can watch all of this action play out. Keep in mind, you said those guys have been eliminated. They can't buy their way back in. It is a freeze out. So once you're out, you're out in this 100K championship event, which will be rolling on over the next couple of days. Let's take a look at who is going to be featured on our, uh, featured on our feature table <laughs> as soon as we start the stream over on Poker Go here, like I said, in just a moment. Who can we expect to see this evening? Well, we have a very, very tough and stacked feature table here today. Uh, we're going to have at least one change of that feature table to keep things fair and to rotate the players through. But as it stands right now, we're going to have Brian Rast, Isaac Haxton, Scott Seaver, who knocked out Shulman, Tom Arcasey, and 
our Purple Jacket leader and also one of the tournament chip leaders, Stefan Sondheimer, at the feature table. There are two open seats currently, since registration is still open. They're keeping seats open for players that come in late. So there's a very good chance you might see some colorful characters join this tournament later on. So it's going to be fun, it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be very, very slow and well-paced. So this is sort of like the perfect second screen experience uh, for your Monday night. Sure, maybe you're going to watch some football tonight and you want it on your second screen, you want to watch it on your phone or on your laptop. Everyone's got an iPad or some sort of second screen laying around. Well, this is the perfect way to do it with Poker Go because you can watch both simultaneously because Poker Go is literally everywhere. Yes, you can watch through the Apple TV and the Roku and all those normal devices, but also on your phone or your tablet or your laptop. It's literally wherever you want it. Masters 17, if you want a discount on that annual pass, this is a great time to subscribe right now to Poker Go because the 100K championship event is underway. The first final table, or excuse me, feature table, is about to kick off here momentarily. In fact, it's starting right now, so we'll let you get over to that. Thank you so much for being with us from the Ivy Room at the Aria in Las Vegas. Alongside Remco Renkma, my name's Dave Farah. Thank you for watching the Poker Go pre-show.